Hello. Hi. Welcome, everyone. Did I scare some of you? I'm sorry. I saw some of you startle. All right. Welcome, everyone. I missed you all. It's been a week, and I, I actually really missed all of you, and so it's good to be here again. Well, thank you all for joining us again today, this morning. If this is your first time here or if this is your first time watching, my name's Caleb and I serve as the lead pastor here. And we'd like you to know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you've been through, however you identify, whatever you believe, right, that this place is a safe place space for you to belong to, for you to explore your faith and discover who you are, who God is in all of that. And I just welcome all of you and I thank you for being here. And um, it is uh, November and I see uh, Brandon with the stash and so I'm trying, okay, I'm trying to grow something out. It's, it's not, you know, I'm not that, that great at it. <laughs> But I'm pushing it out there, okay? But so excuse the, the messy look if, uh, if you think that. All right. Well, if this is your first time, there are restrooms on the other side of this wall. And if you have any questions at all throughout the service, anyone with these red lanyards, we're here to, to answer any questions, to serve you, and to help you out, okay? So just grab any one of us, and, and we'll be there to help you. And... We'll start our worship service today like we always do with some passing of the peace where we flash our peace signs at one another and we say, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Make sure to get everybody. 
We've got a big choir, so you've got to make sure you've got to get everyone today. <laughs> All right, and to enter into our time of worship, I'd like to read a prayer of peace for our call to worship. And so if you would join me, you can close your eyes, you can keep them open, just be comfortable, relax, and uh, breathe, right? Breathe, and let's settle in, embrace this space that we're in, right? This liminal, sacred space yet also mixed in, intertwined with all that we are as human beings living in this world, everything just colliding, mixing together. It might be messy, but it is beautiful because that's what it is. So please join me for this blessing. Peace to the overexcited, the overstimulated, anxious fight or flighters with nothing to fight or flee. Peace to your breathing. Peace to your heart rate. Peace to the endless rush of thoughts. You are below in the cool, quiet, deep peace. Let them pass overhead like clouds. Amen. And if you're able, please stand and join me in singing Hymn of Promise, which can be found in your red hymnals on page 707. join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, you are all mystery, and yet each created moment tells us of your goodness. We are all at ease in a world we cannot control, but you have given us the secret of love. Grant us so to love our neighbors and ourselves that we may find you whom we seek with heart and mind and soul and strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and always. Amen. You may be seated. And the winner for children's time is... uh, you guys. Did you know I was here by myself all alone last week? (laughs) 
Uh-huh. Okay. What did you get? A robot. A robot. Okay. What? What? What's that robot's name? I don't know. That's okay. I don't know. Okay, Tyler, Ryan, you guys are back. You guys are back. Did you have a good week? Yes. What made it good? Uh, That's okay. That's okay. Guess what? Do you guys remember uh, how many books are in the Bible? Uh, 58. 58. Wow, we're like halfway there. Halfway there. 66. Okay, there you go, Ryan. Okay, good. And what two parts are, is the Bible made up of? The Old Testament and the New Testament. That's right, Old Testament, New Testament. So wait, if there's 66 books in the Bible, how, if there are 39 in the Old Testament, how many are in the New Testament? Four, five, 26. Yeah, we, we got there. We got there. Well, guess what? What's, um, we have one of my favorite holidays coming up. There's two of them right now, right? But one towards the end of the year. Do you know which one? It's not my birthday. <laughs> it's not your birthday. <laughs> month? The 12 months. 12 months? Yeah. What's, what's the holiday where we open gifts, you guys? Oh, my birthday. <laughs> it's still your birthday. It's still your birthday. Christmas and birthday and... Hmm. Right, you said Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what, you guys? In the New Testament, there are four books that open up the New Testament that are called the Gospels. Do you remember what the Gospels are, what the Gospel means? What does Gospel mean? It means good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. And with Christmas coming, who do we talk about in good news? Jesus. That's right. And the first four books of the New Testament are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all those books talk about Jesus in different ways. So we're going to learn about that as we also come up to Advent. But in the meantime, let's think about the Gospels. That's children's time. Thank you. And speaking of the gospel, our scripture is from the gospel of Luke 21, verses 5 through 19. It can be found on the New Testament, page 85 in your pew Bible. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrection, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Jesus isn't that great at answering questions. Say, so, teacher, when <laughs> will this happen? Well, when the wars and insurrections happen. Can you guys hear me back there? Monitor? Okay, good. All right. You know, it was, uh, it's been a tough week for me this week. I was uh, hoping to get back into the swing of things after being gone for last weekend. And just on Saturday, um, I noticed that Noah was getting the sniffles. And he started coughing. And on Monday morning, as we were getting ready to drive back home, I was strapping him in into his car seat. And he sneezed <laughs> right into my mouth. I know, it's kind of gross, sorry. <laughs> and I knew there was no way I was not going to get sick. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's not COVID, by the way. It's just the cold I tested. Um, but apart from being sick this week, there, we also had our midterm elections. And, you know, there's just so much anxiety uh, around politics these days, right? It's just unavoidable. And, I, you know, I remember years ago when the election results didn't go our way, right? Our pastor would come up and, he, you know, he would say something like, remember, our true citizenship is not of this country, but it is of a kingdom that is not of this world, right? And I always thought that was so cool, right? Like, you know, we were superheroes from a different planet, right? We were so special. And it gave me reassurance, right? Like, yeah, you know, my real home is God's kingdom. It doesn't matter what happens in this country at all. But as I've matured and grown in my faith, I've learned that it actually is a part of our mission, right? To, to love and to care for those in this world, right? In this country. And we can't just be apathetic to it, right? We just can't. And we just can't take on like a senioritis attitude about all of it. Do you guys remember senioritis? Right? It's when last year of high school, you're seniors and you're about to leave, so you just don't care about anything, right? I, I think I missed like 48 classes my senior year, uh, 48 days my senior year of school. I got a note sent to my parents that I forged, and I, yeah, I wasn't a, that great of a kid, sorry. <laughs> don't do that, kids, right? <laughs> But, you know, that attitude has gotten us into trouble. You know, over the years, over the centuries, that whole, like, you know, this is not our world attitude, that it's gotten us into trouble with the environment. You know, we've just used up all the resources without a care about the repercussions. Because we say, you know, we'll be dead soon, so who cares? You know, and that's just not what God wants. That's not that, the attitude that we need to have, right? God wants us to be good, responsible stewards of our earth. But at the same time, we don't want to get so distracted by everything going on around us that we forget what our true purpose is, that we get so lost in the sauce, right? And this is what Jesus is saying in our scripture today. Right? When you first read it, right, you think it might be a prophecy about the end of the world, but it's not. You know, it's actually about the destruction of the second temple, right? And it happens in year 70 AD in the Roman Empire. And in the years leading up to the destruction, everything that Jesus says here, it actually does come true, right? The disciples face terrible, terrible persecution by the emperor Nero. And if you've heard of Nero and what he did to Christians, it is gruesome, Right, burning people alive and, you know, skinning, really bad things. I don't want to get into that, right? Just gruesomely torturing Christians. And Nero was the one that put uh, Apostle Peter to death. But after the, the death of Nero, Rome was torn into four, and this year was called the Year of the Four Emperors. And so the wars, insurrections, nations against nation, and all that this is referring to is referring to the Roman Civil War. And Jesus is saying to his, to his people, right, it's going to get tough. It's going to be really rough, but you will endure. You will endure. And so this passage is not so much a warning as it is an encouragement. Right? Jesus is encouraging his disciples with hope, giving them hope for the future, no matter what comes. And the fact that we're here in, our, in a church worshiping this same Jesus, right, shows us that they did endure. They did. And the reason 
this scripture is in our, our lectionary calendar. Right? In the lectionary calendar, it's the Christian year that we follow week by week leading up to Advent, right, which is the beginning of Christmas. Right? The reason why it's here, it's because it is leading up to the coming of Christ through the perspective of the kingdom of God, right? which I personally like to call kingdom, right? kingdom because as you know, I don't like to use pronouns when I refer to God. You might have noticed it. You might have noticed when I, I introduced the Lord's Prayer, I always say that God's love is both like mother and father, and that's because God is both like mother and father and also like neither, right? As God is, is spirit, God is not gendered. But it's also because it highlights the kinship that exists in God's family, right? So kingdom, or right? kingdom. And, and the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God is the duality. Right? It's a duality that exists simultaneously together. Right? And the theme of this duality exists all throughout the Bible. You see it in the Old and the New Testament. And this duality is of the here and not yet. Jesus says that a lot. He says the kingdom of God is here and not yet. Not but, but and. It's here and not yet. It's both and. It's both keeping ourselves from being distracted by all the frivolous arguments and not being apathetic and caring for all and loving all. Right? It's both recognizing that the kingdom, right, heaven, paradise, eternity, all of that is here already and it is also to come. It is both Jesus is here with us, Emmanuel, and will come again. Does that make sense? It's a both and, right? You might think it might be a matter of balance, right? Well, where we kind of have to straddle, you know, the line between one side or the other, but it's not really balance because a balance is when we think we're not one or the other. But both and, this duality of kingdom is one and the other. Holding both. Being both. And then and the next week, right, next, next Sunday from today is Christ the King Sunday, uh, or Reign of Christ Sunday. And we're going to explore more of what that means for all of us as we enter into a time of Advent together. But this week, I wanted to introduce this concept, this topic, because it can get a little confusing, right? The whole both and thing. We, we, we like to think in terms of one or the other, black and white, but it's in the gray that it gets kind of jumbled up, you know. But this week, I'd like to, as you go about this week, I want you to think about the both ands in your life. Right? Think about where is that needed in your life? Where can that be more helpful for us to think in that both and perspective? And I'll give you a quick example as we finish up today of this both and perspective as we live our life. Right, whenever I get into an argument with Abby, I think to myself, I'm right, and she's wrong. Who's been there? <laughs> We've all been there. You know, and I always think, you know, I'm the one that was wronged. I'm the one that was hurt. I deserve an apology. But, you know, Abby is thinking the exact same thing. And whenever we would go into couples therapy, I, you know, I would always think, oh, this is an open and shut case. I'm going to tell my therapist about what happened. My therapist is going to tell Abby what's up. <laughs> you know, she's going to take my side definitely and make Abby apologize to me. But I've learned from experience every single time, every single time, that is just not the case. Right? Instead, it's always both. Both Abby and I are thinking the same thing. Both Abby and I have been wrong. The other, both of us need to apologize. And both of us are right. right? Both of our feelings are valid. Our emotions, our hurts are valid. And the problem is that our pain keeps us from seeing the pain of the other. Right? Our own pain blinds us from seeing that the other is just as much in pain. We can't see past how much we've been hurt to see that we've caused so much hurt as well. 
It's always a both and, always. But it's so much easier to just think everything is black and white, isn't it? Right? To think that it's one or the other, either or, right? I'm right, she's wrong, but that's not how life works. It's just not. And that's not how God works. Even the, the very fundamental definition of God, right? The Trinity is both and, right? God is both God and God is spirit. God is God and God is Christ. And so as we draw closer to Advent in the coming weeks, let's separate ourselves from the either or thinking and move into the perspective of the both and. Amen? Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession followed by a time of silence. We come to confess to you, our loving and merciful God, 
that we have fallen short of our responsibilities to love you and our neighbor with all our hearts, minds, and souls. However, we thank you for your grace and that we can live free of any condemnation. We come and receive the free gift of grace and forgiveness that you give to us through Jesus Christ. And we are made anew by your love. Help us today to learn and grow more into your perfect love. In your loving name we pray. Amen. And as we pray together today, I invite you to join your voice with mine by responding to the words, Lord, in your mercy, with the words, hear our prayer. All right, let's pray. Yeah, loving and gracious God, we come to you together as one to lift up Helen Carr as she was hospitalized with congestion, coughing, and trouble breathing. God, we pray for your healing and protection over Helen. Help her to receive the right treatment to get better and give her strength. Fill her body with nourishment to fight off whatever is ailing her. And may she be at peace to know that you and all of us are with her by her side. Lord, in your mercy. And we lift up the Lesher family as they are repairing damage to a fire in their home. God, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for the smoke detectors that alerted them of the fire. We thank you for the first responders that quickly put out the fire. And we pray for Ty, Kayla, Nora, Milo, and Luna. Give them peace in their sleep. Give them assurance that you are always watching over them and that you love them so, so much. Lord, in your mercy. And we thank you for Luella Cox and her recovery from shoulder surgery. We thank you that everything is going well, and we pray that you continue to strengthen her and help her shoulder and body to heal. Lord, in your mercy. And if we can have all veterans to stand up, let me say a prayer really quickly for all of you. And we thank you. For all the veterans in our congregation, in our communities, and in our world who have given their life to serve their country, we lift them up to you. We pray for your love and healing over all of them, right, in their bodies and in their minds. We pray for the organizations that have been created to support and help them. Would you bless and equip them to be able to give the love and support that they deserve to all of our veterans? Lord, in your mercy, you may sit. We trust in your ever-loving kindness, and we intercede through our prayers for all of our loved ones and all those that need your guidance. In your loving name we pray, amen. Amen. So I, I've set a, a date for our first tech class for seniors. Um, called Connection Found is the, the nonprofit that we're starting. Uh, we're teaching seniors how to use social apps like Zoom, FaceTime, and all of those things so that they can connect with their loved ones, as well as teaching them how to avoid the thousands of scams that are out there. Right? The, the, the number of money that was lost in just LA County in last year alone was like $1.7 billion for over 60 years. And so it's, it's a dire need. And so we're actually going to be starting this trial class. It's, only, it's just our church people. Um, and so don't be inviting too many people. I want to kind of run a trial class to see where the challenges are because I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a little challenging here and there. Um, and so that's going to be on November 30th at 2 p.m. Or the great thing about this is that I can set it on a weekday in the afternoon, and I'm sure... That will work, right? And so November 30th at, at 2 p.m., if any of you are interested in coming to learn, um, just let me know. And we're going to be holding it. It's, I, I was originally setting it for the hall, but I think there might be um, 
some setup for the Christmas boutique, so we'll do it in the lounge if that's the case. Okay. Uh, and my iPad is frozen. Let's give it a little second. Okay, there you go. See? And the children's choir and the Christmas play have begun meeting. Uh, they, they started meeting last week uh, in Lucas Chapel, which is a little room where we have coffee hour. And they are meeting at 345 to 445 for the Christmas children's choir to practice. And practice for the, the play, which is going to be a reading theater. I have no idea what that is, but, you know, I trust Everly. She's the th theater person. And uh, so we're doing like a short 15-minute reading theater, and that's going to be right after the choir practice, 445 to 545. Um, for the choir, it's just any, any children over the age of three. So if you know anybody, let, let them know, let Everly know, and, and send them our way. For the reading theater, they just have to be able to read. Okay. And our Christmas cantata will be on December 11th, Sunday morning uh, during our, our normal worship service. And December 18th, we're having like a little sneak peek of the children's Christmas choir and the play. All right, so make sure you don't miss any, any days leading up to Christmas. And for our, our monthly finance reports, in the month of October, we all, we all gave a total of $17,271.35 which is a lot, right? So yay. <laughs> so thank you all so much. To, to put that into a little perspective, right? In, in September, which is when I began these monthly finance transparency reports, um, we received $18,037.17. But in the month prior, in August, we only had 8918 So we had almost a more than double jump from August. So Thank you all so, so much for all of your, your generosity and your support. And as of October, we are still at a negative $29,428.34, which is still pretty rough, right? And we do still need to raise $5,231.03 to meet the 100% of our apportionments, to meet the 75% of our apportionments, which they're going to be considering as 100%. You know, we don't need it be overachievers with that, right? We'll just hit the 75. So $5,231.03 by the end of the year is what we need to raise for our apportionments. It's what we give to our uh, denomination and they support us. We've received a $15,000 free money grant this, this year for termites and stuff like that. So we really want to hit that 75% that this year. All right, and so if, if you're able and if you're willing to help, you can donate on our website. We have QR codes in our bulletins, and we have offering baskets in the front and in the back. And as today is communion, we're also taking um, offering for the community fund, which is a fund that helps you know, anybody that comes to, to seek help for at, at our church. Because you know, we have people periodically come that are, that are in need, and they come and ask me for something, and that's, that fund, I use that fund to to provide them with food, gas, or uh, a room, or something like that. All right? But if this is your first time, we'd like to say, don't worry about giving. Just sit back, enjoy your time here, but get to know who we are, right? Get to know the many different community partnerships that we have, and what our mission statement is, and all of that. You know, before you, you decide that you want to be, you want to support us, we would love for you to get to know us, and we'd love to get to know you. And so come to our coffee hour, which is right after service in the room on the other side of this wall. But I know that it can get pretty daunting checking out a new church. So if you want to just sneak out of here, the best way is to do it during the postlude. Just give me a wave. I'll be standing right there. Just give me a wave to, to let me know that you don't hate us. All right. Well, thank you all for your support and, and all of your generosity always. Thank you so much. And we'll invite Donna to lead us in the offertory prayer. Offertory prayer, God, we offer back to you that which is already yours. Use these, our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, and all that we are for the transformation of the world. In your holy name we pray, amen. Our hymn, if you could stand for that, is I'll Fly Away, and it's 2282 in the Faith We Sing hymnal.
Thank you. You may be seated. Now I invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving by turning to page 13 in your hymnals. And for those watching online, the words will be on the screen for you to follow. And you may pause the video here to grab your elements that will represent the body and blood of Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God who gathers us together. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. When nations shall now lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And at his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, on these gifts of bread and wine, and for all those that are watching at home. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray together as one, knowing that God's love is like that of both mother and father as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, because there is one loaf, we who are many 
are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. And the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And as is the custom of the United Methodist Church, all are welcome to come and take part in Holy Communion. All are welcome at this table. All right? So as ushers direct, please uh, come forward by the center aisles. And when you come and reach the front, you can just put out your hand and I will, uh, I will give you the bread into your hands. I'll drop it into your hands. And then after you take the bread, you can go on to your respective sides and we'll have the cups for you on the sides. And if you do not wish to receive from persons, we do have a sealed container on the side over here for you by the piano. And if you're unable to come forward, let any of the ushers know and we'll bring the bread and, and uh, juice to you. And it is juice, by the way, and not alcohol, just in case. All right. Can we have uh, Mark and Abby come forward to help?
God, by the bread of heaven and the cup of life, you make us one body. Bind us together by your spirit that we might live into your hopes for us, a community centered in Christ and rich in compassion, commitment, courage, and care. And may it be so. Amen. If you are still holding on to your, your cups, you may bring it down to the front. We have little baskets here where the cups can go. And after the benediction, I won't tell you to sit, but you may leave at that point or you may sit back down and um, sing, well, sing the, the benediction response and then you may sit back down to enjoy the post suit or you may leave at, at, at that point. So if you're able, please stand for the benediction. Beloved, see and live through the perspective of the both and, where you can hold both the struggles and joys of this life, to be of both heaven and of earth, and to bring with you the love and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.